Okay, okay guys. Right, so we're answering the the homework I gave you yesterday, right? Yeah. Okay, so let me just double check on the recording. Yes, I am. It's not falling. That's fine. Yes. So we were looking at two different four. Yep. Okay. So they tell you that an object with a mass of five kgs. So this is question one. The mass is equal to five kgs. It is lifted upwards with uniform velocity through eight meters. So its height is eight meters. Time is equal to six seconds. Eh? Calculate the work done. So this is exactly like how we did that last example yesterday. Yeah. Eh? Mm -hmm. Okay. So they want you to calculate the work done. What's the formula for work? Force times the distance. Eh? Now remember in this instance here, do we know the distance? Yes. No, like, no. We were given the 8 meters there, eh? so that will be the distance obviously that it moved there eh? because it's lifting it upwards. What do we not have? Force. Force. <coughs> force. Yeah. So how will you work out force? F is equal to M. Mg. In this instance it will be G. Yeah. Right? Because remember it's acting against gravitation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? So for <laughs> right. So force in this instance here will be equal to mass times gravity. We know the mass which is five. We know gravity which is 9.81. So what you get? 49.05. And this would be Newton's. So using this here we can calculate work. Work is equal to force times distance or displacement, right? So this would be 49.05 multiplied by 8. So this would come to? 3.4. Okay, everybody okay with that? If you said, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. And then you're okay to the same thing. Yeah, so you just, I just broke it up to show you how to each thing, right? Then they ask you to calculate the power, right? So for your power, power is equal to work done over time. Okay, so it's work done over time. We know the work because we just worked it out. We know the time because it's given to us as 6 seconds, right? So this is 392,4 all over 6, which is? 65.4. Okay, that's that. Straightforward, simple? Yeah. Okay. Um, let's look at the second one. So they tell you with the second one, An object with a mass of 30 kgs is at rest on the horizontal plane. Okay, so the mass is equal to 30 kgs. The um, horizontal force of 80 newtons is applied. So the applied force is equal to 80 newtons. Mm -hmm. To displace the object horizontally through 120. So your S is equal to 120 meters. The resistance against motion is? 80 meters. <coughs> Okay, calculate the work done against frictional force. Okay, so the first one, work is equal to force times displacement. Which work they ask for? Frictional, right? So which force would you use? Frictional force. Okay, so this would be 30 multiplied by 120, which is? Just joules. Oh, 3.6 kilojoules. Eh? Then they ask you to calculate the total work done. So, what would the to total total? What would the total work done be? 
apply force apply times distance. Okay, so work is equal to force times distance. We're going to be looking at your applied force. So that would be 80 times 120, which is? 9,000. Okay, straight forward. Next one, they ask you to calculate the work that's transformed into kinetic energy. Now, the work that's transformed into kinetic energy, which force are they referring to? M4. M A. M A. Right? That's the force they're referring to. In this instance here, we know the mass. Do we know the acceleration? No. no. Is there anything we can do to work out the acceleration? No. What? We won't be able to work out the acceleration because we don't have enough information. But what can we do to calculate the MA? The force being applied minus your frictional force. Right? So that's what we'll use to replace it. So this work will be equal to F minus F mu times the distance, right? So this would be 80 minus 30 times 1. 20, which is 6,000. 6, okay, what do you call it? Small and yellow thing there? Mu. 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 That's eight. Doesn't doesn't sound doesn't sound like that. F U. It doesn't sound like that. Okay. Last one is the total power when the force is applied for 15 seconds. Total power, right? So for total power. Which force, I mean, which work would you be using? Total. Your total work, yeah. right? Yeah. So power is equal to work done on time. work time. So which which work would you use here? Which number? 9,600. 9, 9, so this is 9,600 all over 15, which is? 6,640. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know how many, <laughs> how many scratches I have to do? <laughs> yeah. Try this method, scratch. Try this one, scratch. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just sleeping. I think it's falling. Oh, you said you're having issues with this one? No, no, no. I, I had four bites. I. No, it's fine. No, I had like, one. Yeah, I was mixing up one or two things, but it's fine. Okay. And I'll stay with it now. Anybody needs to take a picture or take it down? Good. Okay, it's nice when you get things later. So you have to do correction. Okay, I'll take it out of the net. Yeah. Okay, moving to the last part of dynamics, which is potential and kinetic energy. And from yesterday, when we spoke about it, you'll have an understanding of what kinetic and potential energy is, right? Yeah. So, let's go through it. I'm on page 56 there. Right? I'm looking at the half of the page where it says kinetic and potential energy. You only started work between kinetic and potential energy now. Yesterday you got your point on the test. I think the test. How oh, nice. Oh, nice. Wow, what does that mean? No, you're talking about uh, yeah, other subjects. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, good. I told it was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> the union is coming on <laughs> So, um, yeah, we're looking at kinetic energy, right? So they tell you that the energy a body possesses due to its motion is known as kinetic energy. So an object moving at 50 meters per second poses more kinetic energy than at any lower velocity. Makes sense, right? At any lower velocity than 15, obviously that object has more velocity. I mean, sorry, at 15 meters per second, it has more energy than any lower velocity because you need more energy to obviously move this faster. Okay. Um, the unit in which this is measured is in joules. If a force F acts on an object of mass M and causes a displacement during time, as well as an acceleration, the force is doing the work and energy is transferred to the body. This body possesses kinetic energy. That's just some theory, right? If you need to define kinetic energy, what you would say is, you know, first line over there, the energy a body possesses due to its motion is called kinetic energy. That's the definition of kinetic energy. Okay. So they give you a breakdown of formulas. Okay. They tell you work time is equal to force times distance, which we know. They replace force with MA. And then they started substituting for A and S. And if you look on the next page, 
they ended up getting work done is equal to half mv squared. Now I'm at the top of page 57. Top of page 57, mm -hmm. they tell you that the sorry, work done is equal to half mv squared. They tell you that the quantity half mv squared is called the kinetic energy of the object. Work done is, in, uh, is a measure of energy transformed, therefore energy is, a measure, is measured in joules. So, to calculate kinetic energy, you use the formula half m v squared. We know m is mass, v would be velocity. We all okay with it. Let's move on to potential energy. So, potential energy is the energy a body possesses because of its relative position with respect to a reference plane and gravity. Sometimes you may have heard potential energy as being stored energy. Okay? But in engineering science, potential energy is the energy a body possesses because of its relative position with respect to a reference plane. When a body mass M is raised vertically through a distance of H, work is done and energy is transferred to the object. If this mass M is raised at a constant velocity, a force of F is equal to mg is required. Energy transferred is equal to work done and you get the formula mgh. The energy transfer to this object is called potential energy. So to calculate potential energy, you would use the formula mgh. M being mass, g being gravitational constant, h being height. Okay. Is everybody okay with that so far? Sorry, just a quick one, right? So you've got two types of energy, right? So the potential energy is uh, object from a height, right? Yeah. Right. But, uh, kinetic is more uh, object traveling in velocity. It's moving. So, but now you've got a, a ball dropping from, from here down to the bottom, yeah. but it will also have, won't it also have kind of kinetic energy as well? So, yeah. Yeah. same thing you said, yeah. right? So, say there's a ball resting here. Yeah. Okay? At this point where it rests, yeah. it has a potential energy. Right. which is equal to mgh. Its kinetic energy at this point would be equal to zero because there's no motion. Okay. okay. If this ball starts to fall, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? That potential energy convert. is going to now convert into kinetic energy. Okay. Just before this ball hits the ground, like a <laughs> centimeter away before it hits the ground, its kinetic energy would be at a maximum, which would be equal to half mv squared and its potential energy zero. would be zero. Okay, so remember, yeah. as this ball is falling, potential energy is now being converted into kinetic energy. So if this had 50 joules of potential energy, here it will start being 49 joules potential, 48, 47, 46, so on, so on, so on, so on, so on, until it comes to zero. But your kinetic energy will now become 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until it comes to 50. So will your potential energy equal your kinetic just before it's the Yes. Which is what I'm coming to on the next one then, which is called the conservation of energy. Has anybody ever heard about that before? Yeah. Where they tell you energy is neither created nor destroyed, only transferred from object to object. Yeah. Yeah. Silly question. The, your final velocity of the ball would be zero, right? Yeah, no, it's not when, it hits the <laughs> when it hits the ground, right? When it hits the ground, it's going to go at rest. So its velocity is only zero. So I that's why you see, just before it hits the ground, oh, okay. there was maximum. Because I'm thinking if it's zero, then you can actually be it's zero. It's going to be zero. zero so that's only ground. when it hits the ground. Okay. Just before it hits the ground, there was the maximum amount of energy from potential got transferred to okay. kinetic. Okay? So if you look at the bottom of page 57, conservation of energy, they do test this definition, guys. Energy cannot be destroyed or created, but can be changed from one form to another. Potential energy can be changed to kinetic energy and vice versa, right? In fact, and we did this in the chemistry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, collision is the mm -hmm. Okay, that's okay. Okay, that's okay, right? So, um, can I take this part? Okay. Okay. Example uh, 3.9. You're all still with me? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Can we design things in chemistry? Can we, we can use the same uh, definitions of 
what we learned in chemistry. Even if it's not in your bar. Yeah. If, you know, they all got the same energy. Energy energy is energy juice energy cause energy juice to motion. Energy 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 motion. Potential energy is stored energy mm. or relative yeah. to a position. Yeah, it should be. Okay. okay. So now we're doing example 3.9. So they tell you that an object, okay, so this question in this example was wrong, right? I'll tell you why just now. An object possesses 800 joules of energy. So I'm giving an example. Okay, so they give you the energy which is equal to 800 joules because of its height 3 meters above the ground. So if this is this, this here, yes, 3 meters. If the object is allowed to free fall, what will its kinetic energy and potential energy be before it reaches the ground? But, okay, so exactly like what we said before, if the ball is over here, right? At the start, its potential energy will be equal to mass times gravity times height, and its kinetic energy would be zero. zero. Just before it hits the ground, like somewhere here, your kinetic energy would be equal to half m half mv squared and your potential energy would reach zero because your kinetic energy is now at a maximum. Mm -hmm. The thing is, what the question asks was, they were supposed to ask you calculate the velocity <coughs> of the object before it reaches the ground. Because they gave you the energy, right? If this object has 800 joules of energy, at the start here, its potential energy is going to be 800, right? At the bottom here, its kinetic energy is going to be 800. And this is where it introduced the principle of conservation of energy, where a gain in potential energy equals a loss in kinetic energy. And a loss in kinetic energy equals a gain in potential energy. So, so yeah, yeah, so for this, this question here, they're asking you what is the... Um, Velocity of the object. Yeah, right. so I'm saying the initial question, the answer would be 800. 800, yeah. right? Uh, but obviously it's relative to, to but yeah, yeah. it's 800 joules, right? But main thing guys, you understand what I said when I said a loss. So remember I told you as this object is falling, it's gonna lose potential energy and it's gonna gain kinetic energy. Okay? So at a certain point, the, the amount of potential energy that was lost is gonna be equal to the amount of kinetic energy that was gained. So you remember like this 800 gonna go 799, 798, so on, so on. Kinetic energy is going to reach 800 just before it reaches the ground. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're all okay with that. Okay, so the question was supposed to be what is the velocity of the object before it hit the ground? So, this is the only information we have. These are the two formulas that we have. How would we solve it? Okay, to work out velocity before it hits the ground, we this is your velocity, right? We know this energy because it's 800. We need to solve for m. Okay, how would we solve for m? we would use your potential energy formula. Why we would use this? Because we know this energy, we know the gravity, and we know the height. So we can solve for M. So let's do that, right? So we will say EP is equal to MGH. This is equal to 800 M, 9.81, and the height is three. So therefore M is equal to 800 all over, Yeah, 27.8. I didn't read it out. How much is that? 27. 183k. Right? Now, to basically state the kinetic energy, you would say a loss in EP is equal to a gain in EK. So, loss in potential energy is equal to a gain in kinetic energy. Therefore, your EK is also equal to 800 joules. Right? Because the question basically at the start told you an object possesses 800 joules of energy okay. because of its height. So they're basically telling you its potential energy is 800. You state that the kinetic energy is also 800 joules because of the loss in potential energy is equal to a gain in kinetic, that conservation of energy. You have to put that in down. You must. 
Can I just go the to the time station question. and say EK and tell you the formula? No, you have to. You have to make sure you you you, you take out marks for yeah. You no, you, no, you have to actually out. start because remember this year is a conservation of energy. For you, you, you have saying, to. But I'm saying you should write the the formula out. EK is equal to half mv squared, and underneath that you got EK is eight hundred is equal to half mv squared. Carry on. I'll stick there about that. You're very strict. I know that. Oh yeah, no, because it's your paper. That's it. <laughs> huh. Right then, um, so now your EK formula is equal to half m. V squared. So 800 is equal to half, uh, we know our mass, which is 27.183, and then you get V squared. So your V is equal to, go ahead. 1600 divided by 27 would be the year. Ah, you know what, right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. It doesn't mean you can't, I can't work it out. Oh, uh, yes. Like that, sir? Huh? That's that. You have a class. Let's get in a test. Let's get in Everybody in here is they made a lot of stuff. You know, science, your your variable names, what you call it. But mine's taking it from there and moving it down. 786, huh? 786? 786? No. Okay, so what you would do there? Half. Half by 27.183. Yeah. You got the number? Yeah. Take 800 That's over it. that number That's and then square root that number. Yeah, so 7.672 7.672 meters per second. So, what does this mean? The velocity just before it reached the ground, so like the velocity right here is equal to 7.672. Because remember, as it's falling, it's going to pick up velocity. Okay, because it, it, it was free falling. You start at zero and then just. So, since we have a graph, we have the one that's going up, down, and then coming down. Yes. And at that 1.5 meters, that would be equal to the other thing. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can you, is that right? Or is it, is it, so, at 1.5 meters, uh, you're. Uh, your potential and kinetic energy will be equal. Yeah. Yeah. Always. Think then you ask a question again. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Yeah. This here basically is discussing the entire system. How much was lost, was gained in potential kinetic energy, and how much was lost in kinetic energy was gained as potential energy. So it okay. would obviously be equal to so each other. Let's, let's say, just ask thing. If we put the EK is equal to EP, right? Then put the half mv squared is equal to mgh and work out for the height. Yeah. Use the height as the unknown right? and then put into the calculation. Sure, you get you, you would be able to work that out because remember that energy is equal to that. Yeah, like how we got this energy. Yeah, so I'm saying if you want it out, you get up for the height, it should be one point five. You get another problem, is that? Also, form the vector equal to each other. No. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yeah, just to solve for that. To solve for h. No, you'll still come back to three. So because this 3 would give you 800. Yeah. You're talking about. No, no, no. Make the half mv squared yes, equal to mgh. You're going to come back to 3 meters. Why? Because this, see this velocity that you're using? Yeah. This velocity is the, this entire portion until you came to this part here. Yeah. Remember from the start till you come right down here. Is going to be the full energy tra transfer. Oh. Remember when you drop from here, your velocity is zero. As you're dropping, your velocity is increasing. Get what I'm Yeah. Once you let go, it's not going to be seven point. Oh, Only so when it comes oh, just yeah. before the drop. You need to find the halfway one. Mm. Okay. Okay. So maybe if, if you put what you said and you put 1.5 as your height, you can solve for the velocity at that halfway point. Okay. Okay. Can you be okay with this? Stay forward. Okay. Let's look at the next page. So, um, they tell you the application of law of conservation of energy, as we have seen in, uh, as we have seen above in certain situations, 
The potential energy lost is equal to kinetic energy gained and vice versa. And then we told you to remember this formulas. Then we're moving on to example 3.10. Example 3.10 tells you that an object with a mass of 50 kg is lifted vertically from the ground through 10 meters and then allowed to fall back. Okay, so your mass of this object is equal to 50 kg, the height of this object is equal to 10 meters. Calculate the gain in potential energy when this object was lifted. Okay, so we know the mass. Okay, so your, let's start. Your potential energy formula is equal to m g h. Okay, do we know the mass? Yes. Do we know gravity? Yeah. Do we know the height that it was lifted to? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we can just solve it. So this here will be 59.81 and 10. So watch it. Yeah, that's 500 times uh, 9.8. 4905. Okay. Sorry, man. Yeah. yeah. Just, you just draw the diagram, right? So, the ball is coming up. So, yeah. the ball, you throw it from it. Yeah. Object is lifted, so it's lifted and then it's allowed to fall back, yeah. right? So, you so, so want to see what's potential in This ball was initially on the ground, right? Right. And then it was? Lifted. Lifted. To this point here, and then it was allowed to come back down again. Well, that's what they're talking about. I thought someone's throwing the ball up and coming yeah. down. The ball is lifted. Wait, it's a thing. <laughs> but how are they lifting the ball? They give you different textbooks. <laughs> you give us any textbooks. How are you supposed to know? You keep on texting, maybe next section you'll change the textbook. Yeah. So how the ball is lifted and to the top there? Uh, maybe like. Somebody carried it to that point. Also. But then you have a tension on the with the force. No, 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 Potential energy is the energy a body possesses because of its relative position with respect to a reference plane. In this instance, your reference plane would be the ground. 10 meters away would be where you are, right? That's basically what you You know okay. why? Because, I'll tell you why, right? There are the other two questions following. So if I, had to, if I drew the ball throwing, uh, being thrown up and coming back down, all answers would be different. You understand? It's a big difference of how you draw it. Draw it. Yeah. But it's lifted. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing I, yeah. I would have And then, yeah, no, it would. No, but then either way, what, what, were, what were you going to use to work here? Uh, later on, working at velocity. Yeah, but what, what would have been different? What, what, what would you have done different if it was being thrown? And then how you would answer this question? Because remember, they asked you for potential energy. Yeah. So you would have wrote down the potential energy formula. Yeah, nice. And then and you have energy. mass, gravity, height, so you have just substituted that. Even yeah. if it's on Even if it's thrown because they asked for potential. Okay. Okay. Then they tell you the kinetic energy just as the object reaches the ground. How would you do that, guys? Kinetic energy just before it reaches the ground? Same. Is equal to energy. Energy. Just use your conservation of energy because do we have velocity to calculate that? And remember to calculate the velocity, I mean, yeah, to calculate that velocity, you still need to know your energy. So, the only thing you can use over here is a loss in EP is equal to a gain in EK. So, therefore, the EK is equal to 4905 joules. Everybody okay with that? That? Fine? Yeah, you good? Somebody answer me, please. Yeah, we're good. The velocity of the object when it reaches the ground. So, we'd say EK is equal to half 
mv squared 4905 is equal to half 50v squared and then therefore v is equal to 495 is 4 Yeah, it's 495 divided by 25 and the square root of that answer. Essentially, not bad. Square root. So far, everything we did wasn't bad. 14.007 meters per second. So that's the velocity of the matter. So far, guys, I'll be okay. Is anybody lost? Is anybody confused? Anybody want me to explain anything again? Please, yeah. Okay. Any you okay? Yes. How much are you? Yeah? Only the <laughs> Okay, let's look at example 3.11 then. Right? So, example. 3.11. So, you know every question that they do, they must give you the angle because they know you love it so much. So, they tell you that a metal ball with a mass of 6 kgs rolls from rest for 8 meters. So, it's on an incline plane, right? This ball starts here. The mass of this here is equal to 6 kgs. It rolls from rest for 8 meters. So, basically, it's, yeah, it's the displacement is equal to eight meters so from there to there okay the initial velocity is zero because it rolls from this um down a friction display making an angle of 12 degrees to the horizontal calculate the potential energy of the ball at the beginning okay so right let's Look at it, right? Your potential energy formula is what? Mgh. Mgh. Do we know the mass of the object? Yeah. Do we know the gravity? Yeah. Do we know the height? Yeah. No. No. We don't know the height. Yeah. This, is not, the height. this is not height. Yeah. But we can work on the height, yeah. right? How we can work on the height? Remember, if you make this a right angle triangle, this line here, from where the ball is, because remember, they asked you to work on the potential energy of the ball at the beginning. So where it is here, this would be its height. Okay. Right? Mm. So, if you're looking at this, this is your angle. Your height is opposite your angle. And this is basically your uh, hypotenuse. Because hypotenuse is always opposite to your 90 degree side. So, angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. What is it? Right. Sine. Sine. So, you'd say sine of 12 degrees is equal to hypotenuse over... 8. So 8 sine of 12 degrees is equal to your height. Therefore, your height is equal to 1.663 meters. So using this here, potential energy is equal to mass times gravity times height, which is 6 times 9.81 times 1.663 which is equal to 97.84 joules that's the potential energy okay Next question, they asked you to calculate the kinetic energy the in kinetic energy that the car po what am I saying here? Kinetic energy that the car possesses. Look at the wrong question. Calculate the ball's velocity after eight meters. After eight meters, remember eight meters is the displacement of this ball. Right? So after eight meters, if you want to work with the the kinetic energy, it would be if you look at the velocity, you would have to use kinetic energy. So after 8 meters, you would have to use your kinetic energy formula. But remember that a loss in EP is equal to a gain in EK, which means that your EK is equal to 
EP, which is 97.884 joules. So using that, you can say EK is equal to half MV squared, which is equal to half times 6 times, I'm oh, sorry, this is V squared, and this is 97.884. Therefore, the velocity is equal to Okay, okay, it's still good. Everyone? Okay. Last question they ask you to calculate the velocity of why am I reading man? Calculate the potential energy of the ball after four meters. Okay? So basically if the ball went from here to like halfway here, calculate the potential energy. Okay? How you would do that? Remember, potential energy is equal to mass times gravity times height. We need to work out the height. How you, so you imagine now if at this point here, you are trying to work out your height. And this here is obviously 4 meters. You do the same thing you did in the first question. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. What's 4 meters? You said that after 4 meters. What 4 meters be? After 4 meters of... Traveling, huh? Yeah, yeah, but remember, four meters is halfway of its distance. Yeah. So. Oh, you say the game is it after five meters? How would you do it? Yeah. You could do one of two things, right? Okay, sorry, sorry, I'm confused. Can okay, you Okay, after that, yeah. that right? So, sine of twelve degrees is equal to hypotenuse over four. Four sine twelve degrees is equal to the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse, right? <laughs> Therefore, your height is equal to the half of that. 0 0.83, 2. Okay. Then you substitute in the formula EP is equal to MGH, which is equal to 6 times 9.81 times 0 0.832, which is equal to. Not even change it. 48.972. That's how you do it, right? Try to your one. If you want to do it after a certain one, like after a certain way, you you could do it one of two ways, right? Remember we worked at this total energy of potential energy. And then if they said after five meters, you could Either so after five meters, remember the full distance would be eight meters. So, so. you go from here and then five meters get somewhere. Yeah. That remaining which is three meters, yeah. Right? So you, you could work at the height for three meters. For three meters okay, right? And then that value you get for potential energy, subtract it from this, and that will give you after five meters. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because you worked at that remaining which that's one one way or the other way. Uh I'll let you do it. Okay, it just so happened that this one they asked you to get, get half, so it didn't matter which one. Yeah. So for this one we didn't necessarily have to work out the sign, you could have just said a walk of 1.663 and then put it straight into your... But you don't do that, Nikki, because your minus marks will not. Uh, <laughs> you don't need to solve all that, huh? Yes. <laughs> would, they, would they accept that? Though? What? Yeah. Yeah. If, you just... if you see a question, right? Yeah. And if that question has four marks, yeah. this question here, right? If you saw it in the exam, it has four marks. You can't say half of that thing is equal to that, they only give you one mark for an answer. You will know in that instance, they want to see you saying sine 12 is equal to h over 4, then you get a mark there, then you. Substituting, that's how you Okay. Stop burning somebody. <laughs> you did the wrong thing. Stop burning over there. Okay. <clears throat> Guys, we good so far. Yeah. Dynamics is not bad. Nothing is as bad as kinematics, huh? <laughs> so far, angular motion is okay. <laughs> None of you are even agreeing with me. Yes. 
Seconds, I saw the paper. There's other things that have dropped, but I don't know. It's fine. Oh, oh. Got that, guys? You heard that? Shame. <laughs> Shame. That's a large fine. It's okay. You keep the marks. It's easy to be, right? Be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, tell me I'm going to take it down. We'll do this last example. Tomorrow will be my favorite section statics. I love it. I hate that thing. Um, when these guys are taking uh, examples, they, do they take uh, examples from the from these activities for the past? Uh, for the for the exam? Questions are making examples. Yeah, I'm not talking about you. Like, you no, won't the, see uh, an exact question like this because remember these questions they, they ease into your other questions. Yeah. Right? I'm talking about like the but activities. Your question, from the activities, they don't take. Uh, no. You no some, some for some uh, textbooks they do, mm. but it's. Remember, everything is still the same method. They'll just take your wording exactly like it is, yeah? And, and change bigger yeah. and stuff. But yeah, activity is there. But the main thing is past your papers because then you're getting exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. If you were there yesterday, you would have seen, you know, at work, you were doing work and this and that, and the question you showed me the last time, and I told you it shouldn't have been there, should have been there. Dynamics. If you look at the solution, and if you look at the formulas and the methods you use, yeah. that's how you would have answered the question. Okay. You need to know that section to answer. Yeah, that one, I don't think, I think they made a mistake in the way they yeah. made up the thing. You're done, okay? Yeah. Okay, that takes up. You know. Okay. So I'm looking at I'm not like I'm down to the three point twelve. Three point twelve. Okay. I'm looking at example three point twelve. So that's it. Hey, they tell you that a car with a mass of eight hundred kgs accelerates uniformly from rest up an incline of one inch to forty. So you have a car. Yeah. They accelerate uniformly up. Mass is equal to 800 kgs. From rest, its initial velocity is equal to zero. Up an incline. And reaches a speed of 80 kilometers. So its final velocity is equal to 80 kilometers per hour. Time taken to do that is 70 seconds. Calculate the acceleration of the car. So before we do that, let's work out these values, right? If you convert 80 kilometers per hour to meters per second, what'd you get? 22.2. And then here, with the slope, remember that your angle will be equal to shift 10, 1 over, 40, which is 1.432. Right, so this here is 1.432. So, they want acceleration. How would you work on acceleration? No, so you have to write the whole formula out. Uh, you have to work with the. A is, a is equal to B minus U over T. A is equal to? B minus U over B minus U all over T because we give an initial, final, time. Then we can't use any other thing because we don't have. We can't use F net is equal to MA because we don't know the applied force, we don't know any other forces. 
this is the information they gave you, this is the information you have to use. So this would be 22.222 minus 0 all over 70, which is? Okay, then they tell you calculate the kinetic energy the car possesses at the end of two minutes. So the question now changed because the time is now 120 seconds and they want kinetic energy. Kinetic energy formula is half mv. Square. We know the mass. Do we know velocity? Mm. Uh, no, no, not for 120 seconds. Right. Do you understand that, guys? We know the velocity of the car after 70 seconds. Mm -hmm. We don't know the velocity of the car after 120 mm -hmm. seconds. So what do we need to do? We need to solve for that. The formula V is equal to U minus 80. If you make me a subject formula here, just here V is equal to u minus 80, right? Yeah. Remember, this, this is the normal equation we use. When we work in acceleration, we just say we're making it subject of the formula, right? Yeah. So this here is now equal to minus zero. Or plus. Huh? Is that a minus or a plus? Yeah. This? Huh? Minus. Which one? Which one? Which one? Which one? Okay, thanks Emma. So the acceleration is 0 0.317, the time is 120. So what's the new velocity or the velocity at 120 seconds? Thirty-eight point zero four. Meters per second. Okay. Guys, we okay with that? Oh no, no, we're not done. Kinetic <coughs> energy is equal to half m v squared, which is equal to half eight hundred thirty-eight point zero four squared, which is. Eight one. Eight one. Eight one. Six point six four. Yeah. Jules, right? This can be written as five seventy eight point eight one seven kilojoules. Cool. I need to figure. I'm looking at this number. It's a long number. I'm thinking yeah, maybe it's something wrong. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Does he have to take out this? <sighs> Can I ask the next question? Potential energy. Huh? Potential. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even need the question for me to hear. Next question, question is, you must ask you for, the gain in potential energy, energy after 70. 70 seconds. Not 120 seconds, 70 seconds. So we're back to 70. there. Yeah. Yeah. You can't say that the potential energy is equal to kinetic energy in this instance because it's different scenarios, yeah. right? That was from here to the 70 seconds. Their one is like if it continued, oh no, sorry. It was from here to here. Their one was if it continued to a further point. Yeah. So your loss in uh, potential is not equal to your gain kinetic. But I want you to use the I can see it in your face. Yeah, no, I'm not, uh, Why won't it be? Because both are for 70 seconds. Oh, why do you think something like that? Right. Yeah. So this one here, okay, so your potential energy. Right? Potential energy formula M is equal to G H. Right? Do we know the height? No. We have to work it out. No, we'll have to work on the height. So remember after 70 seconds, just say the object is here. This will be your height. Right? We know the angle, we know the height. Do we know what that hypotenuse value is? 
the displacement of the object to be noisy. No. So they tell you that the object traveled no. a certain distance. Mm -hmm. no. No. So what do you have to do? You have to find using. I wish I had the formulas then. Yes. Sorry. So you work at one page. What if you work at the uh, uh, velocity for seventy seconds and work at the? Uh, you can't do that, yeah. One work out. One work out. Let's try this way. Let's see if you come okay, to the same right. thing after that. Because um, to me it seems yeah that you can. But okay. So they want that there. How would you do it? You will have to work out this displacement, the S value. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, from your formulas that you know, yes, looking at what you do know here, which formula would you use? V plus U over 2 times V. S is equal to V plus U plus V over 2 times V. Plus V all over 2 times T. Times T. Yeah. Okay? U is equal to 0 plus B, which is 22.222 all over 2 multiplied by 70, which is? Seven 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 point seven seven point that. If you look at the, the equation they use, they use the other one that, um, what is this? Ut plus half so. this thing, and you still come to the same number there, eh? which is why all these formulas can work together. So now that we know the displacement, what we can use, we can say that sine of 1.432 is equal to h all over 777.77. Right? Seven, 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 eh? So 777, seven, 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 Sine 1.432 is equal to height, therefore your height is equal to seven meters. So EP is equal to MGH which is equal to 800 times 9.81 times 19.437, which is? So this is in joules. So this answer can be written as 152.54 kilo joules. Okay, as you don't understand what we did there. Right? Let's see a few cases. Let's try to think. Okay, yeah. 0.317 times 70. Times 0.5 times 8. No, no, Half mb squared. Yeah. We know the velocity already. Yeah, 22.2222. Yeah, but now you're working the velocity for 70 seconds. Yeah. yeah. We got the velocity in 70 seconds. Yeah, so you just take that answer. Yeah, okay, you've got mm. it. But the number doesn't work out. Doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. I'm done trying to think why. We you worked out velocity for 70 seconds. <coughs> Reaches a speed of 80 kilometers per hour after 70 seconds. Mm. But it should have been. Eh? Oh, just thinking whether because it's on an incline. Because it's on the incline, the uh, can't use conservation of energy.
for the addition of gravitation and water. That's also a kind of energy to it. Because remember, the gravitational force will add work it's hard to, to the object. Yeah. It's horizontal plane, it will be in So if you say, Okay, so taking it down there. Yeah. Eight hundred ten nine point eight one sine of one point four three two four three two hundred eighty six mg sine of work units. That's a force work done to go to force time displacement. Yeah. Which is Seven 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 five seven seven seven. Which is one five two five four one. No, sorry. How did that give me that? No, you know what I mean? I worked out the force that the gravitational force mm -hmm. that will pull it up, yeah. and then I calculated that work. But that gave me that the answer for the. I think the objects are dressed. Potential energy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm trying to tell this makes sense. <sighs> Conservation of energy applies to plain flat plain surfaces. It has to be either horizontal or yeah. vertical. But yeah, just. Yeah. But they don't say that anywhere in this. The only thing they do say is in top of page 59, in certain situations, the potential energy lost is equal to kinetic energy gain. Okay. So I guess you must say in every situation. Okay, guys, are done? Okay. Oh, see you in uh, page 57. And you're talking about when mass is raised vertically to a distance of uh, age, work is done and energy is transferred to the object. If this object uh, mass m is raised at constant velocity, then the force is equal to mg, right? And then they substituted mg to the formula for work. And that's how they get that. In this instance here, your velocity is not constant. constant. So your potential energy is going to change. And then it's also different to your kinetic energy because remember your velocity is still changing so your kinetic energy is also going to change mm -hmm. so, yeah. for so, so only work for, for conservation velocity. of energy it won't work on inclined surfaces mm -hmm. because of the change in velocity potential energy you look at a specific spot mm -hmm. and then you calculate it at that point okay mm -hmm. so yeah glad we cleared that up Whatever you say, hey, I don't know what you're talking about, but anyway, it's fine. What is it? Did you understand what I just said? <laughs> you just say that for much. Alright, why would the, 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 the velocity be different from uh, or, 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 or the incline and that the, the vertical one loss? The incline is like a straight, uh, like a, 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 a continuous slope. So the velocity shouldn't change. The velocity shouldn't change. Yeah. It's increasing at a constant acceleration. The velocity oh, okay. will change. Okay. okay. Yeah? So yeah. If it has constant velocity, then that's different. They like how? See over here at seventy seconds, it was twenty two point two two two, but. At uh, 120, it increased to 38 because the constant acceleration increased due to that point. Okay? You okay? And what do you want to say to that? Can you hear? Okay, so look at the last example. For example, 3.1.3. So, 
They tell you that a car with a mass of 900 kgs accelerates uniformly up an incline. So this mass is equal to 900 kgs. Okay. Um, the incline is equal to 1 is to 70. It accelerates from an initial velocity of 10 kilometers per hour to a final velocity of 60 kilometers per hour with a displacement of 250 meters, so meaning that it is equal to 250 meters. The resistance against movement, which is your rolling resistance, is 800 meters. Calculate the work done after 250 meters as well as the tractive resistance. Now, the tractive resistance, um, they're basically referring to it. So, you know, after you work out your entire work done, that force, you're going to see now, right? So, on this object, they want you to calculate the work done after 250 meters. So, basically, they're talking about the work done of the vehicle. Now, in this year, there's going to be three things acting on this in terms of work. You're going to have your potential energy, you're going to have your kinetic energy, and you're going to have your friction. the frictional work. Right? So, first thing is let's sort all this out first. So your slope. What about your what about your final force that's putting it up? Uh, no, it's accelerating itself. Yeah. So it's moving like with engine power, you know, force being applied to it. External force. Oh, okay. Right. Right? So your angle is equal to 10 to the minus 1, 1 over 70, which is 2.8.8. Degrees. If you convert this, Okay, and then that's that, right? Once you got this, this is zero point eight point eight degrees. Okay, so your Total work done on the car, okay, will be all your potential work plus all your kinetic work plus the fictional work that's also acting on the car, okay. It's, this is not in terms of forces being applied and for movement and everything. Talking about all the work that was applied onto this car, what is it? But the only thing I'm just a bit confused is you'll have won't you have different ones? So your your car is moving initially at ten kilometers per hour, right? Final velocity sixty kilometers per hour, right? Won't you have uh, your potential energies will be? Can you just draw without figures? Just can you just draw uh, and just explain to us like. Um, I know you're gonna work and you know be able to form this stuff together. I just want to try and understand the thing. I'm not uh, seeing what you say no, about the forces. No, 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 I go forces. Do I go forces? This is this is energy. And okay, energy. energy is, yeah, well, um, you just mentioned about potential energy and the kinetic energy. energy. Right. right. And you mentioned the 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 fictional the work. Fictional work. The fictional work. Right. All I'm saying is, at 10 kilometers per hour and 60 kilometers per hour, would that also affect your kinetic and potential energy? It will affect your kinetic energy. Different points. Energy. See now, question like this: What makes it different to forces? What makes it different? Yeah, yes. because it's asking for what work. No, in terms of direction, that will. But you know, like normally, your force applied, you'd say positive. Yeah. Your forces away from it, you would say negative. Yeah. In this instance, you would just calculate all the work that's being done onto this car. No negative, no positive. You just so, add everything up. All the work, whatever potential work that was this car generated based on its height, because they said after 250 meters, right? So the car reached the top, 
what what is its potential energy at 250 meters okay mm -hmm. the kinetic energy of the car from 10 to 60. Yeah, so is that what you're saying? Can you draw the car and show us all the work that's done on the car with the direction okay. of the arrows? So, this is your slope, right? And that's your car. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah? This car is eventually going to reach this point here, which is 250 meters. Mm -hmm. And a certain height. Mm -hmm. Okay? But obviously, that inclined has an angle. So at a certain point, at the strong at 50, that potential energy would be equal to mgh, just the mass times the gravity times that height that you would get here. Okay? Yeah. The car initially started at 10 kilometers per hour, and at the 250 meters it was 60 kilometers per hour. Kinetic energy is energy due to motion. Okay. So in this instance, you're going to basically work out the work done from 10 to 60. All the questions that we answered, we were basically answering it from your initial to final. But in all the other questions, the cars were taking off from rest. Yes. So your kinetic energy formula is actually a half mv squared, but it's the difference in velocities, which means it would be v minus u all squared or v squared minus u squared exactly exactly like your average, like your average right? yeah, yeah. but we never show this u squared because it was zero this whole time yeah. every every uh, example we did the car took off from rest so that there would have been zero so the formula just came to half mv squared basically it was yeah. so it's like working on the kinetic energy at 60 working around at, at 10 kilometers and subtracting that's the difference is the yeah so basically the kinetic energy of this was half mv squared minus half mv no yeah, half m initial velocity squared that's the kinetic energy of this vehicle yes everybody's okay with that yeah. right and the frictional work being done on this that's just due to rolling resistance you park a car in uh, incline the car is gonna roll right so what was the work being caused on it that would be force times displacement. So the work done by the resistance would have just been that. Okay? You all understand that? Okay. So all the work that acts on this vehicle is this potential, kinetic, friction. Okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. So, okay, why have we got this here? Do we know mass? Yes. yes. Gravity? Mm. Yes. Height? No. no. So, there's only one question. What should be mass? Okay, so, sine of 0 0.818 is equal to your height all over 250 meters. Yes? Remember? Yeah. 250 meters, your angle is 0 0.818. You're working on the height at 250 meters on the incline. Right? Okay. So this would be 250 sine of 0 0.818, which is equal to your height. So what's your height? 3.57. 3.57 zero. zero meters. So we now we know mass, gravity, height. Here we know mass. We know final velocity, we know initial velocity. That's fine, we can work that out. Here we know the force and we know the displacement. Okay? So we got everything we need to work out the work done by the vehicle. Okay? So your work done by your car is basically equal to your EP plus your EK plus the work done by your resistance. Which is Sorry, man. Yeah. Are you just adding up the total work? The total work. Doesn't matter directional. Uh, object, yeah. Doesn't matter directional. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So, if you are to write out the formulas, this is mgh plus half m v squared minus u squared plus f mu s. 
Yes? This here would be 900 times 9.81 times 3.570 plus half 900 times 16.667 squared minus 2.777 squared plus and then this part here would just be 800 times 250 okay so for this first portion what is it Yeah, change this thing, but the thing to change. You push it on the chair. Yeah, I know. Just sign it in the right place and then make the same notes. Okay. Yeah, yesterday I made us in the right place, right? Okay. So here yesterday you made the notes, right? Yeah. So where are you supposed to sign it? Yes. This is your name. Can you say I'm asking something? These are your number. Oh no, you, okay, you made your notes, right? Okay. Okay, then I won't you. <laughs> yeah, you, you relax. You say me, no? Yeah, but nobody would have told me if the yeah, you know, yeah. I can't I can't. Right. Three one five one nine. Five three. Five three. Is that one? Yeah, wait, okay, so where you're signing is you know the numbers that's below your name? Yeah. Okay. So the numbers that's below Okay. So this is your name, these numbers are below you. Uh -huh. <laughs> you check this. Yeah, see a bunch. Yes, You've got to sign on this thing. You should. You should put them on the Okay, very good. I'll do this with you. Just let me just finish this example. Can't you finish for all of us? No. That's to be all. Just say that the thing is right. Okay. Okay. This one? 121. 121. 534. 534. 722. 722 plus 800 and 250. 200,000. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Add this up and then that will give you your work. You. Okay. So you want to just be careful. The work is you add everything up, means the forces you're yeah. working with that to be up. Which is approximately 353.054 joules, kilojoules. Right, so that's the work. And they wanted the attractive um, resistance. So remember, work done, work done is equal to force times displacement. Right? Yeah. They want to know this force basically. That would be the attractive resistance. Okay? But they're asking you to calculate the work done. Yeah, please. Yes, well. As well as the attractive resistance. Oh, okay, as well. Right. So, this here is 353.054 equal to force times 250. Force is equal to. One four one two. Okay. Remember, check to like when we tell you in a question or something the resistance of something is so and so and so. You all know it's the force being uh, pushing something away, right? So it's the same thing here. Yeah. 
Okay, guys. Mm. Are we okay? Nah, so far, we're all on the same page. So, then, okay, also, that brings us to the end of dynamics. Okay? If you turn over, you'll see the summary of the chapters. You can see the notes that you need to know. No, what? How many? No, uh, these are How many marks is this? How many marks is dynamics? Let's check the master papers. Okay. You'll be able to I'm see. I'm just asking because it's like a. Thinker. Um, I'm just trying to understand. <sighs> They like to test uh, this thing here to potential and uh, kinetic energy. Okay, guys, your homework is question 1 and 2 for activity 3.3. Question 3 and 2. Oh. Okay. Activity 3.3. Question 1 and 2. Here's a bit of a uh, nice one. Yeah, it's confusing. Uh, it's also confusing. To play around with you to see how you get to. Okay. Um. So, just uh, thinking, right? So, the resistance, uh, uh, the force of the resistance, you worked it out, but you used the total power, the total work that was done in the system. Calculating the force of the resistance, right? To calculate that, we use the formula as much as force of resistance. This right. is tractive uh, resistance. Yeah. See, the, the resistance against movement, which was rolling resistance, is. Oh, yes, I, see. I see, I see, I see, I see. Tractive resistance. So, is the whole, whole, all the force, everything that's yeah. Okay, right. Okay. Guys, are we okay? You know what's homework? Anybody have any questions? I'll call you at midnight. Yeah. <laughs> you know why? <what? laughs>